what is going on? Welcome to this week's episode of the Second of Strength Podcast. Wherever you're at, I'm grateful you're here. Grateful you're spending your seconds with me. Um, today's going to be a little bit of fun. We're going to talk about, um, ultimately, courage. We're going to talk about making pivots in our life. We're going to talk about making the changes that you need to make, ultimately, to become the person you want to become. Because I think we've all got places we want to go. We've all got dreams. I think sometimes comfort is holding us back and keeping us from the potential that we can ultimately you know, that we can ultimately have. And and the reality of it is, is not only does that impact us and hurt us, but it hurts other people because there's people out there who need you. They need your potential. They need you to show up in their life in your true authenticity. And I think sometimes we don't do that, right? And so today we're going to talk a little bit about my story. I, um, you know, as a motivational speaker, as someone who speaks in schools a lot, other events, TEDx, you know, I... Um, I wasn't always that. I wasn't always that. And until recently, I'd been doing multiple things. I've been a director of marketing for a very large company. Um, and while I've been doing that, I've been building you know, this life of my dreams and pursuing the path that I want to pursue and trying to help as many people as possible. And it wasn't until recently that I walked away from that other side of my life and to just pursue motivational speaking and uh, help you, help you more, and be able to pour into this passion and helping people as much as possible where before I was really split on my time and, and my energy ultimately was draining. And if you listen to last week's episode of the podcast about energy drainers and energy vampires, there was, and not that I didn't love my job, I, I, I did and I love the people there, um, but at the same time, it was draining me to be able to pour into people like you as much as I possibly could because I was always split on what I was doing. And, you know, it's interesting when I when I talk to people after making that choice and announcing that I was leaving and and, you know, being in this place. Sorry, my dog putter is uh, under the table right now and deciding to stand up and needing to be pet. But uh, when I when I made this choice, it's interesting because there's really two responses that people give. One of those responses is. I am so jealous of what you're doing because I think too many people are feeling stuck in their their current world, stuck where they are, and they want to make a pivot in their lives. And so that's one one response is that people were super jealous. And then the other piece of it was I could never do that. I could never leave. I could never I could never get out of of the rat race. And I think that sometimes people are limiting their potential, limiting who they can become because of where they are. And and what I what I think people don't realize is they see you or they see me in a point in time and they go, wow, you're successful. You're doing this thing. What they don't know is the amount of time and energy and effort I've put into this over the last years. They don't know the the late nights, the hours, the effort. They don't know what I do, you know, the the unattractive secret of of success and not that I'm the most successful person in the world. I got a long way to go, but you know, people looking at, at me or you or wherever they are and, and they're going, wow, they, they don't realize the unattractive part of this is that it's a grind. It's effort. It's energy. You don't just get to where you are by doing nothing. You know, nobody's gifted anything in this world. And so people are kind of in this world of like, wow, I'm super jealous. I want that, but I can't do that. And I remember talking to some people and when when I decided I was going to do this and I started vocalizing that I was going to leave, um, people immediately placed their fears on me. And there's a quote I heard just the other day that says, one of the biggest reasons we get talked out of our dreams is because we're talking to people who have given up on theirs. And that quote resonated so much in my life because, because there were times in my past where I was talking to people who had given up on their dreams and it planted a seed that I couldn't be successful in mine and it's totally false it's fabricated if and if you are talking to people who have given up on their dreams you're talking to the wrong people you're talking to people who will never believe in you because they don't believe in themselves and we need to talk to people and surround ourselves with people who are going to give life to us instead of holding us back. And and you talk to people and you look at people who have done it, who have paved the way before you. And so I don't know how to get to where I ultimately want to go, but I do know that talking with people who have given up on their dreams is not the right 
the right path. It's not the right people to talk to. And so, but part of this is, you know, recognizing and understanding in your life when it's time to pivot. And in my life, in my story, there was just something on my heart. And and I probably waited too long, to be honest, because I'd felt it for a long time. But there was something on my heart that just said, you you need to go. You need to do this. You need to move on, Re- regardless of the risk, regardless of the of the fear, of the doubt, of the you know the insecurities, of the imposter syndrome, and all the things that I feel and felt. I knew on my heart that I had to move forward and I had to pursue the path that I was meant for. And I don't know what that is for you. Not everyone is on my path, and you know maybe you are, and you're listening to this, and you're trying, you know, you're a couple steps behind me and trying to get into where I'm going. You know, and or maybe you have your own path. Maybe you have your own business. Maybe you have, you know, you maybe you're just a teacher and you've got a side hustle. Maybe it's a multi-level marketing business. You know, there's so many different things that that people have that they call feel called and compelled to. But if we listen to people who gave up on their dreams, then then we'll, we'll never reach ours. And so you can you know, there's a, there's a thought or a quote that you can pivot ex- pivot and succeed, or you can stay the same and die. And I think that that's an emotional death, right? That's a that's a place where you don't want to end up because it just tears you down and beats you down. And I I felt that before. I felt that moment where I was just like stuck in my life, and making the choice to move forward and make this pivot and make this change. And wherever you're at, if you're in the process of making a pivot, making a change, it is what is going to to give you life. It's what's going to help you. So there's a there's something that I I just truly believe in. I I've been thinking about it over 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 the course of of my life and over the last few years and, and ultimately in this decision to leave my my job to just pour into you more. And, you know, two of those things. One, I guess, is is, you know, I talk about your one second of strength. I believe that in that moment of decision, in that moment of choice, in that moment of fear, you have your one second of strength to move forward. You have it. You always have one second of a choice, one second where, you know, because your brain is always going to default to safety. Your brain is always going to default to comfort. That's that's human nature because that's what we've been taught for, for, you know, ingrained in ourselves for hundreds of thousands of years, right? Like the earliest ancestors were survivalists and everyone is a survivalist. But in the past, survival meant comfort. In the future, survival means growth. And I hope that that gets through to you because because if you want to survive in this world, in this life, it is not comfort. It is in the future. And there's a it, there's something in in psychology called exposure therapy which is which is the thought that if you expose yourself to your fear enough that you will overcome that fear. I had an experience last week where I'm I'm super claustrophobic and we went down on a family vacation to southern Utah. We were hiking these narrows and basically in these narrows you you know it, I mean it is super narrow. It was like I don't know, maybe you can't see my hands right now, but maybe a foot wide, a foot and a half wide, you know, for about, I don't know, 30 yards. And I was standing down there going, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And I walked through the first part of the narrows and when my chest and my back started touching, I was like, I can't do this, I can't do this. And I, you know, I believe in your one second strength and the one second strength can push you forward. It can also just be like, eh, don't make stupid decision. This isn't right for you. So I went backwards. But, you know, exposure therapy would say that the more, hey, Putter, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is my dog. My dog Putter, by the way, if you follow me on social media, you see my golden retriever Putter. Anyway, he's sniffing around. But anyway, so, um, in exposure therapy, what the what the what the what it would say is, hey, the more you expose yourself to those tight spaces, the more comfortable you're going to become with them. And maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong for a uh, for claustrophobia. But in terms of fear and comfort and moving forward in your life towards your goals, towards your dreams, I fully endorse this theory, where you have to continually put yourself in uncomfortable situations to move beyond the comfort and into your potential. That is how we do it. That is what you have to do. And I just believe that that if if there is this core belief that comfort means safety, right? Like, like 
we don't put ourselves out there. We don't pursue our dreams. We don't push ourselves to our ultimate potential because we want to feel safe and we want to feel comfortable. I would challenge that. And I would say that actually the real safety is in the future. The real safety is moving beyond that comfort to getting to where you want to go because that is what you really want. That is where you're going to find freedom. That is where you're going to find safety. And so if you are stuck in comfort zone, you are actually limiting your true comfort of your future. Forced discomfort leads to real safety. I want to repeat that. Forced discomfort in your life leads to real safety, which is your ultimate potential. Which are the things you want in life? Which is where you are trying to get to? And if you are stuck in your comfort zone, you will never, ever, ever, ever get there. And that is not comfortable at all. That, that should be, for me, as I was looking at making these changes, I, I had this thought in a, in a conversation with my wife where it was where it was like, someday, someday I'm going to look back on this moment, this time of life, right now. I'm going to look back on this moment, and I am going to be either really happy with the decision I made, or I'm going to be really, really regretful. And the next words out of my, my mouth were these, I choose to not regret. That is where your one second of strength comes in. You, It is a simple choice to move beyond that comfort zone, to move beyond, to force discomfort in your life, to maximize true safety in your future, which is what you're going for. And I think that one of the biggest challenges out there is that this belief that you don't either have all the answers, you don't know how to get to where you want to go, which is a fallacy, right? You don't have to go all the way there. You just need to take that first step, find your one second of strength and take that first step. But I think that people root, they tie getting out of your comfort zone to to 100% courage. And I would recommend this for you. Don't believe ever that you have to be 100% courageous because the truth is all you need to be is 51% courageous. 49% fear is fine. Make sure it's 51% courage because that is the difference between where you are now and sticking in your comfort zone and staying where you're at to moving forward out of your comfort zone into real safety in your future. And so as I look at my life and I look at where I'm going and, you know, to, to, I don't know, the challenges that I face and the things and the uphill battle and all these things. And and like you, for so many years, balancing a, a passion and something I want to do for the rest of my life with the comfort of a, of a day job that is super great and super comfortable. But at some point, the tide had to turn. At some point, I had to pivot to succeed. And I don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, the world may fall apart and I may be an ultimate failure in my life, but the choice to move forward is a choice of success. Regardless of what the future has and what failure might look like or success might look like, there is success in choice. There is success in finding your one second of strength. There is success in a decision to move forward and step into or step closer to your ultimate potential. And at the end of the day, as you think about exposure therapy, One little push beyond your comfort zone is all you need. And then do it again. And then do it again. Because if we get too comfortable and we feel too safe, then we are actually not creating safety in our lives. We are creating a future of discomfort because we're deciding not to pursue our passions that are going to lead to a future of freedom, a future of safety, a future of control. So That's what, I don't know, as I think about where I've been and where I'm going and maybe my story will inspire you and help you. Um, I I think that too many people that I've talked to have been like, I love what you're doing. I wish I could do something like that. It's time to stop wishing and start time to start taking action to become the person you want to become. And it doesn't matter if you're starting at zero and, and moving forward, or maybe you're somewhere along this journey and you're moving, moving forward, but keep going, keep pushing, keep forcing discomfort in your life. Keep finding that 51% courage because that is the difference that makes all the difference of where you are now and where you want to go. 51% courage, 
through your one second of strength. So wherever you're at today, I hope this helps you. If it helps you, just share it with one person. Um, and then if you could leave a rating and review um, wherever you listen to that, to this episode, um, it helps get this out to more people. And um, and yeah, share this with one person. It really, really helps me. But more importantly, it's going to help someone else. If it helped you, there's someone else that can help as well. So I'll leave you the way I always leave you. Um, first, I'm very grateful for you and I'm excited for your future. I'm excited to, to hear about how you leave your comfort zones, how you force discomfort in your life, how you find your one second of strength, how you, how you use your 51% courage. But I'll leave you the way I always leave you. Go find your one second of strength and be happy.